Hello Year 11, this short video will walk you through what's expected of you for your first Year 11 assessment task for English on Reading to Write. So as you can see on the board, it is worth 30%. You will need to submit it by 4pm on March the 30th. Now that 4pm cutoff is quite strict. You'll be uploading this digitally and I'll talk you through how to do that later. But it does close at 4pm, so you need to be organised with your technology and get it in by the 30th of March on that before that closing time. Now this essentially is about you as an author, considering yourself a writer. Throughout the Reading to Write unit, you're going to be experimenting with four different styles of writing, analytical, imaginative, discursive and persuasive. You'll be developing skills as an author in how you plan, draft, edit your work for different purposes. Now come week 10, you are going to submit two pieces, two out of the above four, that represent your best writing. Each piece is about 600 words in length. Now I say about because we accept a 10% leeway, so 10% lower or 10% higher around that 600 mark. You should really think about what um, pieces of writing are going to best showcase your skills and best meet the criteria of the assessment to give yourself the opportunity for top marks. Okay, so the first option is one that I'm sure you're familiar with because you've done a lot of analytical writing over the years, and that is essay. Now you're given a stimulus, and as that suggests, it should stimulate your ideas and your arguments. It says that poetry is powerful for its ability to be both deeply personal and yet widely universal. So you might want to pause this video and start to think, is that true of Bridge Over the River Memory? Is it personal or is it universal? And is that where poetry's power lies? You'll need to decide, make a judgment, because the question asks how true is this statement? when considering your study of the poem. We are looking for your personal voice, but it's not meant to be conversational or colloquial. It should be still formal academic in that analytical style. So that's option one. Option two is imaginative. So you've done a fair bit of this in your junior years writing in the narrative form. What we're asking of you for this section is you'll be responding to Tim Winton's Big World, you need to use one of the following three on the board as a recurring motif. So be comfortable with what purpose a motif serves and pick A, B or C, depending on your meaning and your message. What are the, the big uh, style and the ideas that you want to communicate in your narrative? That's your first challenge for this question. The second part is we're actually determining what style or rather what genre we want you to write in. So the Bildung's Roman genre, be aware and be comfortable with the conventions of that genre. Now, like I said in my earlier slide, we are not expecting a full narrative. We're not expecting you to have a beginning and a middle and an end with 600 words. 600 words is more of an extract. The idea is that you should be showcasing your skills. So you might think about a little vignette, a small section from a greater piece, rather than having an entire narrative. Of course, you'll probably understand that we're trying to get you precise and concise with your language because we have that HSC exam in mind for next year. Okay, option three is discursive, probably one that you're not as comfortable or familiar with. For this, you'll be responding to Helen Gardner's The Insults of Age. You'll be writing a discursive piece that addresses a topic of interest to you. So, lots of flexibility. You'll probably see that we're trying to give you a lot of choice and a lot of flexibility for you to showcase your interests and your skills. So think about a topic that really excites you, that interests you, but you should be inspired by Gardner's style. So the challenge is that you need to use one of these devices, so an illusion, a personal anecdote, or a reoccurring motif as a central feature. So not just tossed in, but meaningfully use one of those devices to help communicate your meaning and your message. Option four is the persuasive. And for this, you'll be referring to Stan Grant's The Australian Dream. 
Again, we're giving you a lot of choice because you get to pick any topic that interests you. So you've got a lot of flexibility and hopefully have ownership over your ideas. You'll be writing a persuasive piece inspired by Grant's style where you pick one of these quotes to build into your piece as a recurring motif. Again, we really want you to be thoughtful. It's not that those four lines are just tossed in at the beginning and then not addressed again, but a motif helps create unity and cohesion. So thinking about how you can use the motif to help communicate your meaning and your message. So there are your four options. Now a little bit of administrative um, information here. We do accept drafts here at Freshie, so your teacher will be able to give you some feedback, but we're limiting it to one of your pieces. So we're trying to encourage you to submit the piece that you think is probably you're finding the most difficult or you want a little bit more support with. Because throughout the unit, like my second slide said, we're going to be doing a lot of experimenting with these styles in class. So you'll be getting feedback along the way, but in terms of submitting something for the criteria of the assessment, your teacher will set how you do that, but it will be due by midnight the 16th of March. It could be by Google Classroom or email or paper copy. That's according to the individual teacher. In a second, you might want to pause this slide to read through the details very carefully about formatting. Just quickly, I want you to be using your NESA number. We'll help you find that. And you'll need to include the word count for both pieces. Also clearly tell me which piece you're doing. Are you doing option A, B, C, D, and even what subcategory? Everything's going to go through Turnitin. We will help you set up a Turnitin um, account and make sure that you know how to log that as well. Okay, now regardless of what option you choose, we are marking off the same criteria. So whether you're doing an imaginative and discursive and somebody else is doing persuasive analytical, it's the same criteria that's on the board. Let's have a look at the A range. So for us, we're, up, we're really looking for engaging pieces of writing. So think about that as your primary purpose. You want us to get us engaged and entertained. So we're going to be assessing how well you compose an engaging and thoughtful portfolio of writing. The second thing is all about that form and choosing the language correct for that style. So how well can you craft language, really know a range of techniques and pick the best devices to firstly answer the question and also to write in that appropriate form. So the conventions and the style for whether it's discursive or persuasive. And in English, our third outcome is basically the same every assessment task and that's about your control of language. Uh, is, it, is, there, is it polished? Is it um, deliberate? So how well you can effectively control your language for your intended purpose. Now the skills are the same for every, out, every box, it's just the descriptors that change. So you'll see that it becomes a competent control of language down to adequate or limited. Okay. So I hope that this has made the first assessment task clearer for you. If you have any questions, please see your classroom teacher or you can come and see me. And it's really important that you are comfortable with NESA rules around submissions. So if you've got any questions about illness misadventure or um, extensions and things like that, see me well before the due date. And um, good luck and work hard. Thanks, Year 11.